Hello, everybody. My name is Oles Sonuszko, and I'm from Rakuten. Rakuten is this big Japanese company established in 1999, running multiple services and businesses all around the world, mostly focused on finance, finance and uh, e-commerce. Uh, last year, we've been expanding globally. We've been acquiring new companies. Uh, some of them are very recognizable, and Viber might be a good example of this. Arpas is a platform as service for our internal users, for our engineers. It's based on open source. We already presented this platform at CF Summit in 2013. At that time, we just forked the platform because we needed some additional features which were required in Rakuten. Some of them were implemented uh, in upstream in the years. Some of others were never accepted. But uh, in order to stick with our usage case, we had to keep diverging from the upstream. This allowed us to reach pretty sizable deployment. At a certain point in time, we had probably the second biggest Cloud Foundry deployment in the world. All of this was uh, being run uh, by a team of seven engineers dealing with a uh, wide variety of tasks like uh, architecture, design and planning, operations, uh, user support, security, and so on. We learned a lot of things during these years. First important thing we noticed is don't try to make everything fit in. Sometimes application has unique requirements, sometimes for good reasons, but most often not. Of course, you need to support your users to move to your platform, but not at all costs. It's because it's an application that needs to be adapted to the platform, no other way around. Having a corporate champion backing you up can, can allow you to uh, make sure that things are going into the right directions. Accept from the very beginning that not every application fits your platform. Otherwise, you might end up forking. And forking is a very bad idea. Please never do that. There is too much momentum, too many values coming from the community. Uh, if you want to introduce a feature, try to upstream it first. If you can't, stalk PMs until they agree. If it still doesn't work, then try to build it either on top, either on the side. If you build on top, try to stick to the standard APIs. Try to minimize the number of uh, connecting points between your component and Cloud Foundry. Try to keep all of those as neat and lean as possible. Another thing is that Engineer's time does not scale. Every manual step that you leave behind you is going to come back and bite you, usually at the very, very, at the very worst possible moment. Um, when you uh, create your operational uh, tooling uh, system, avoid shortcuts. Those lead to snowflakes, and snowflakes are really bad. Not effective. Um, not effective integration with your um, provisioning uh, API component can uh, cause even simple updates like uh, upgrading CPU, memory, um, or just uh, storage to take like weeks instead of hours. This also applies to your monitoring system. When you create it, Try to build it in a such a way that you can um, access all required logs and metrics 
from one well-defined place from where you can uh, correlate events fast. Otherwise, you will spend a lot of time on going to particular VMs and searching for possible root causes, uh, for possible error causes. Another thing is that uh, whatever works for a few hundred VMs doesn't necessarily has to work for 5,000 VMs. So build your monitoring system in such a way that you can swap in, swap out components quickly. Uh, so you should be able to um, scale it along with your Cloud Foundry deployment. And uh, kind of funny thing, don't share your command view console with your users, otherwise you might lose visibility when you need it the most. That's uh, something what uh, happened to us once. Assuming that your that assuming that your um, system is going to work flawlessly all the time without any interruptions, without any errors, is a mistake. It's a mistake at, level, at any level because uh, if you take a reasonable long time window, uh, you will notice that your system is slightly failing all the time. But at scale, things break daily. For example, we had that uh, lock pipeline, which was built uh, based on the agent uh, with a smart assumption that logs are never going to be lost. But what happens uh, when a component at the very end of the pipeline starts misbehaving is you can end up with problems everywhere, even on your site. Um, by listening to me, you might be under the impression that we, like we had a lot of problems with our platform in fact, we had some, but in general, it was a very successful platform, which provided uh, tremendous values to our users, to our customers. Uh, regardless of that, we were aware of the fact that we need to catch up with the upstream. So uh, since uh, the beginning of 2015, we started uh, working on Cloud Foundry version 2, and hopefully we managed to uh, bring it into production uh, in the beginning of this year. Currently, applications uh, are being uh, migrated, uh, and, uh, and we are um, working on this. Um, if you take a closer look at this slide, you will notice that our deployment differs um, from the standard one. The reason is um, we have one logical cloud deployment running on top two separate clouds. So we have VMware, um, uh, VMware endpoint, uh, VMware Bosch, with VMware, VMware CPI, which is responsible for providing um, persistent components like etcd, like um, Elasticsearch, mainly databases. And from the other hand, we have OpenStack, um, Bosch Director, which is responsible for um, providing stateless components, mainly um, DAs and routers. As a consequence of this, we have uh, two different uh, manifests. We target those Bosch Directors like individually, and between those two manifests, we have some shared properties. The reason for this is, was uh, at the time uh, we were uh, designing this, uh, OpenStack uh, didn't provide uh, proper answers. Uh, there was some issues with uh, Cinder. But at the time, after some time, it was fixed, so we probably would be able to move our current deployment to OpenStack. There is also one more special thing in our deployment. Most of uh, users, when they deploy their, um, their uh, Cloud Foundry instances, they uh, deploy separately three different environments like uh, staging, dev, and uh, prod. But for us, for a team of seven people, it was uh, a little bit too much. It was generating too much overhead. So we implemented all of those three environments like uh, dev, staging, and prod in one single Cloud Foundry deployment. 
Uh, to achieve this, we splitted routers to three groups, like uh, dev staging and prod, and DAs also uh, to dev staging and uh, prod. In addition to that, we co-located uh, Go routers with uh, Nginx uh, acting as reverse proxy at seventh layer uh, for enforcing ACLs. So for an example, traffic which is going to end up on uh, staging is always passing uh, staging router groups. So this enforces uh, networks, this ensures network uh, isolation, uh, resource uh, separation, and security. How we deploy? First of all, uh, we use Bosch um, for our deployment because we want to stick with upstream. Um, as a CI tool, we chose uh, Concourse because uh, we found it uh, very convenient to us. It was, this tool was built uh, in a view of Cloud Foundry. Uh, we used Concourse for deploying our internal Bosch releases as well as for CF plugins. Initially, we deploy with uh, Bosch Lite. We do some basic units tests there. Then we use uh, this, we, then we deploy on Preprod environment when we, we when we collect some more data. Um, so we uh, collecting many different metrics to observe how uh, this behaves. Um, and uh, finally, we deploy on Prod uh, and we redo the same tests. During the deployment, we use Bosch Errand jobs for um, single components, component tests uh, along with service spec. Also, we use Bosch Errand jobs for um, more advanced tests uh, which, involve, uh, um, which involve testing more than one component. Uh, so we are just test testing features. If, uh, Several components provide uh, expected feature. We put uh, a lot of care when we were designing our Kafka, our log pipeline um, in Cloud Foundry V2. It's uh, built with an assumption that, uh, or perhaps um, I, would, I could, can say it in some, using some other words. Um, the main goal for us was to decouple uh, consumers for producers, and we managed to do so by using Kafka. Uh, Kafka is a central point. On the left hand, we have um, producers, and on the right hand, we have uh, consumers. So uh, our policy is to uh, get everything we have, whatever moves, whatever produces any kind of data, if it's, uh, if it's uh, metric or if it's log file, it ends up uh, in Kafka. We even wrote a co component which, uh, which pulls data from uh, Firehose and uh, puts them to, into a Kafka per application topic. Mm, on the right hand, we have uh, this, this Kafka, this uh, the broker is supposed to store all of those data for three days, so every logs we can imagine are stored there for uh, three days, so we can pull any kind of data we want. But uh, for further processing, we use, uh, for example, ELK pipeline, we use also Riemann, InfluxDB, PagerDuty for alerting purposes. We push our logs to Blob Store. So that's the basic overview of our log pipeline. Uh, as I told you, we collect as, many, as much uh, log and metrics as possible. Mm, but uh, this is not enough. Uh, for example, we uh, realized that we have to also monitor some other components, mostly external ones, uh, which are not uh, in our uh, scope, but we are dependent on. For example, DNS, we had some issues with DNS uh, in our um, previous in the deployment. Uh, at, some time, at some point of time, DNS started behaving um, um, unpredictable, it was started uh, um, responding erratically. So if we had uh, this check implemented, we would have been able to uh, catch this issue much faster. We also performed some other uh, more advanced tests which uh, include end-to-end -end metrics and passive active checks. For example, we have this uh, job which pushes application every few minutes, and because this application does not change 
uh, deployment time should be constant. Those are our Rakuten uh, specific features. Most of them mm, are not uh, applicable to you, but uh, some of non specific uh, Rakuten, uh, non Rakuten specific uh, features, for example, lock access can be usable to you. So we are thinking on, uh, apps, uh, on uh, open sourcing log access, for example. Uh, what's next in Rakuten? Um, we are working on burst of load uh, scenarios. First, we want to target Azure. This is not uh, the only uh, solution we are considering uh, because we have uh, many different services. Uh, for example, we have Open uh, Stack team working on Trove. We want to um, integrate some service providers uh, with those uh, services. We also want to enable um, SSL certificate auto provisioning. So, for example, user instead of uh, filling complicated uh, forms and uh, going through complicated workflow, he could just push uh, his application along with his uh, certificate and have it installed on load balancers uh, automatically. We are also thinking about auto scaling. Uh, by by saying this, I mean mainly VM auto scaling. Um, because that our team doesn't can can scale that much, so we are thinking how uh, about many different ways to afloat our team. And uh, once elastic uh, pools are available, we are going to um, enable our users to have their application targeted once and then deployed on multiple clouds. There are some areas um, in which we are expecting from you, of course, if you want, some feedback from your side. Uh, most of uh, our concerns are related to missing documentation, to, um, to unknown standards, uh, or about this is also related to job collocation. Some of jobs are uh, requiring some additional uh, tweaks uh, to be able to work properly. Um, of course, when you open PR, they usually complain. So if there were standards implemented, it would be much faster and easier to discuss some issues. We're also thinking of, of that would be nice to have a possibility to preview um, Bosch uh, job templates before the job gets deployed because sometimes it's very time consuming. Also, uh, some of our users complain about logs, that logs are multi line, and we as uh, our past team would like to be able to notify our users uh, when reliably, when they are losing logs, which sometimes happens. Um, we are also interested in hooks. Uh, the thing is, uh, most of organizations have their specific features that have to be somehow implemented when application is being pushed to Cloud Foundry. So by interacting with API, we would be able to uh, simplify this process uh, and make our life easier. That's all I have. Thank you for listening. If you had any questions, feel free to drop me an email or just catch me later. I'm thinking I'm big enough to be easily found somewhere here. <laughs> so thank you.